Yeah. And if there's any audio issues, it's because Jay never wants to press the volume, guys. We're here in Miami. JC, what are we doing today? We are in South Beach. We are gonna do something really cool today. We're gonna go check out Julian Sprunk, granddaddy of everything that is saltwater aquariums. We're gonna go check out his facility. We're gonna see his ponds, saltwater ponds. We're gonna see his mangroves, and we're gonna talk to him and see what he's up to and what he's doing. Could just tell us julian how how this pond is run and some of the issues that you face i knew that i was going to have a limited number of species in there right uh, i knew i wanted to have some diadema urchins so i wanted to have basically pond sump with one pump sending water and i didn't want that water to be a real jet how, how are three sea urchins yeah. A huge mangrove, keeping this thing well clean and not having algae all over the place, because I mean, this is direct sunlight. When I first set up the tank, I had a bryopsis bloom. Right. And it lasted several months. So I dosed a lot of calcium and alkalinity. I put a lot of herbivores in here. I, I did a lot of hand removal of the bryopsis. Still see some? If you look there yep. on the mangrove roots, yep. the roots right there, but you have algae and, like and zoas. Exactly what it looks like in nature. Yeah. Tell us about sediment. Tell us about dust. You just had work done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't. How could you make that less of a chore? Well, it could be set up with a larger sump. You could rapidly process it like a swimming pool does, and you could remove it that way. It's something you could do. A big part of the sand maintenance in this is the cucumbers, and they've reproduced in here. A cucumber there as well. I mean, they really do the job. So they're preventing it from getting caked up or, or just plugged up. Look at that. I've never seen clams this beautiful. I mean, I, I hope we, we get some shots of this. So the salinity control, when it rains, fresh water will float on top of salt water. If you have really strong water movement, it mixes. But if you don't, it still floats. When it rains, it then goes, the fresh water goes into the sump. Okay. And so that excess fresh water just goes to the ground. That way it maintains the water level right where it would overflow if I had rain. But it also is sending just a teeny bit of water over, so I'm losing salt with time. Nutrients are not a big issue, but how often yeah. do you deal with water changes? Uh, that is the water change routine. Okay. So it's it's the fresh water is, is doing that, and I add some salt, and okay. that's it. The simplicity in all this, Jay, right. is, is the genius of it all. Let me show you a little bit of this, too. So it's simple. So yeah, that's R, that's RO water. And I have an RO filter outside and I have an RO tank, you know, big vat outside. And there's a hose from that vat that comes through the wall to this little reservoir. With this Kamor pump, I pump to my freshwater tank. Okay. For the marine tank, for the reef, the same reservoir, pump water, here is the hose to a Two Little Fishies Kalkwasser reactor. The way that thing works is you take spoons of Kalkwasser and put it into the reactor, and when the water pumps in there, there's a little rotating head, and it mixes the Kalkwasser that's sitting on the bottom to saturate it, and then it overflows saturated Kalkwasser. And I have the pump connected to this timer. It turns on the pump once an hour for a minute. It's a limited period of time because Kalkwasser elevates the pH. 
if you overdose Kalkwasser, the pH can shoot shoot up too high. And I know from experience that one minute is safe. You don't have like a float valve. Or nope, float switch, nope. It's, just... it's it's dangerous to have a float switch control Kalkwasser because there's a lot of things that can affect the level in your sump. Uh, if we go to the other side, you'll see I also supplement calcium and alkalinity with a two-part product called Sea Balance. This two little fishy Sea Balance. Water changes on this how frequently? Um, not very often, <laughs> but um, small water changes um, every one to two or three months, uh, but small. You don't have to change the water that often. Sea balance is here. Part A, part B. Yeah, using the apex dose, two channel doser. Every 10 minutes, it, it comes on and it comes out here. Okay. But, you know. This is um, basically chopped seaweed. As you can see, they're raring to go. They're loving it. Oh yeah. And you'll see these guys wait back over here. For the bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, yeah. And they all eat it. Well, Julian, uh, I yeah. can speak for myself and JC. We've been inspired yeah. today. I want to thank you once again for yeah. listening to your home. You're welcome. It's supposed to be an hour, ah. like six hours, because <laughs> the reef geeks and us did not allow us to keep this short. So thanks so much. Yeah. Hope you come to Polo Reef. Really interested to hear about your thoughts on, on the tank and how we're doing things. And I'm looking forward to a large mangrove like this one. 